Summer is one of the best times of year to get out and catch a bunch of redfish, and I wanted to make a video for you guys highlighting the three lures, in my opinion, that are the most effective to target fish this time of year. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to use them. I'm gonna show you footage on the water of them catching fish, and give a little bit of a high-level strategy to when you want to use each of them to get onto the most fish possible. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So right off the bat, the first thing I'm gonna start with in the mornings, in the summer, is going to be a topwater spook. This is the Salt Strong Moonwalk but I will also throw spook juniors, the she pups, top pups, smaller top waters. I'm not a big fan of the big head in one knockers or the Rapala skitter walk full sizes this time of year just because the bait that is around is small shad, small pinfish, small finger mullet, and that's what these redfish are dialed in on. So you don't want to throw a top water that's too big because it gives a very unnatural presentation. Now this size has been great for me lately. I've been throwing it for redfish right up shallow in the early morning. Again, summertime is great for top water because those feeding windows are really concentrated to twilight periods because the high heat does not allow fish to feed as effectively in the middle of the day. They're cold blooded so the really high temperatures are not great on their bodies. They kind of go into preservation mode, find some deeper water and just hunker down until they can feed a little bit better during the evenings or the early mornings. So usually I'm going to throw this very shallow early morning because those fish are up along the shorelines pinning bait up against the shallow grass or shallow shore lines and throwing this and working it parallel to the bank is really really great to get onto a lot of redfish. I like to walk it really slow, let that top water kind of turn side to side and those redfish will start tracking on it. And one tip I've got for you guys when you're fishing these lures is don't stop retrieving it if you get a blow up. The big thing with redfish is that they're not really designed to hit top water lures. If you notice their jaw hinges downward so they're really not supposed to come up and feed on the surface anatomically speaking but if if you continue to work that top water, eventually they'll be able to track on it and actually get it down and get it in their mouth. Most times you'll see them kind of come up and swipe at it sideways because that's the only way they can get onto it. But if you keep working it, you get that first blow up and the fish doesn't connect, don't set that hook and jerk that lure in or stop it because that fish is going to continue to track with that top water. So continue to walk it in that one, two, three, four, five pattern like you're seeing in this video and that redfish will eventually get up on it and hit it properly and you'll be able to connect. Now one big thing that I like, especially with the Moonwalk, you guys can see that this has those single inline hooks on it. Uh, really effective for redfish because again, they're not great at hitting topwater lures and I lose a lot of reds when I fish treble hooks. So the single inlines that come on Moonwalkers or that come on other topwaters, there's not a whole lot on the market that do. You can replace them yourself, uh, but I do like the single inlines because once that fish does connect with that hook, they have very tough mouth and trying to set the hook with trebles, you've got six different hook points you're putting all that power into, you don't have as great of a hook set and I oftentimes will lose fish when they shoot off on a really long run. Now, with the single inlines, once I set that hook, that hook is secured in the corner of their mouth or wherever it did hook them uh, and you've pretty much got that fish once you get it back to you. So I would really recommend for those redfish that have tough rubbery mouths, you're going to want to have single inlines on your top waters. But again, top waters in general, early morning in the summer, late in the evening when that sun is down, a good rule of thumb is stick your arm out and use your hand as a reference. If that sun is above your hand on the horizon, it's about time to start switching to some subsurface presentations we're going to talk about here in a second. But if that sun is behind your hand, you're still good to fish top water. So the hour before sunrise and a bit after hour, uh, if you get a lot of cloud cover, you can fish it a little bit later on. But that's generally the time I like to work top waters. This is always what I throw first thing in the morning to try and get on to redfish in the summer time, they very rarely will not hit a top water, but this is generally going to be my first choice when I start throwing for reds first thing in the morning. So after you put those top waters away, it's time to put on a paddle tail. These are what you're probably going to catch 90% of your redfish in the summertime on. Top waters are a great lure to use, but as I talked about, redfish aren't really designed to hit them. You can get some great, really fun blow ups early in the morning, but you're going to catch the most fish possible on paddle tails. I just don't like them kind of at first light because they're a little difficult to see considering they're a subsurface presentation. Top water is easier to see in low light situations, but once that sun gets up and it gets over your hand, talking about that trick that I mentioned, you're going to want to use a paddle tail because this is easiest for the redfish to kind of track on and strike on just because it's subsurface and it's running at the depth that they're hunting. So you're going to fish this right above seagrass. You're going to fish it over oyster bars. You're going to fish it over depth changes. Any kind of little structure that you can find that's subsurface, generally that's where I'm going to throw those paddle 
tails. And I will say that I, I do rotate between these two sizes. I don't really use anything smaller or bigger than these two, the five inch and the 3.5. I prefer the 3.5 probably the most because the bait that's around in the summertime is generally gonna fall into that three, four inch category. It's small shad, small mullet, small pinfish, and that 3.5 inch really matches that profile well. But that's not to say that there's not big schools of mullet that I do see redfish track on sometimes, or if there's really big redfish in the area, I'm going to throw that five inch bomber. Again, this is also really good on windy days. I'll even bite the head off if I want a smaller profile, but it's a little bit heavier than that 3.5 inch. I can cast a little bit further with it. It sends some more vibration in the water with that larger tail. So if I'm trying to mimic a larger bait fish or get a little bit more vibration in the water, I will use the bomber. Uh, if I need to keep that small profile, I'll just bite the head off and put the weedless hook or jig on there uh, where I've removed the top part. But again, most of the time I'm using that 3.5 if the conditions allow me to fish it. But again, these are gonna be your best lure to use. Uh, they're really great to sight fish with. I like the white because it's easy for me to see. A lot of times when you're casting at redfish, they are moving constantly and you need to make sure that, that lure passes by their face at the right time and, and intercepts their path. So the white is really good for the angler to be able to see where that lure is in relation to the fish as it's moving. And this is by far my number one lure I sight fish with, uh, but it also works really well for blind casting as you guys have seen in these videos, uh, just bombing it out into potholes, bombing it uh, over the mud flats, anywhere that there's oyster bars. You can catch a lot of fish just blind casting with this lure. But for sure with sight casting, the 3.5 is my number one choice just because it's that small profile that big and small fish have a tough time turning down and it's very easy to work. It's very silent when you're sight casting. You don't want to create a big splash when you're throwing lures at fish uh, that are very close by. You have to be very subtle and this gives that perfect presentation when you're sight casting and again you can bomb it out and blind cast with it as well. Now one thing to note when you use these paddle tails I'm almost always going to use an eighth ounce weedless hook whether it's the five inch bomber or the 3.5 inch 2.0. Reason for the eighth ounce is the best numbers of redfish you're going to find are in three foot or less of water in the summer, whether that's a mud flat, grass flat, or it's a shoreline, three foot or less. And I'd say probably the majority of the fish that I catch are in a foot or less. They're getting really shallow early in the morning and really shallow late in the evenings. In the dead heat of the day, they're off in the middle of the channels. They're not even feeding. So most of the fish that I catch are really shallow. So I use that light eighth ounce weedless hook to get up there and be silent and be able to get around structure with the weedless presentation. Uh, I would say that if you're using anything heavier, it's gonna put that lure right to the bottom uh, and you're not gonna be able to fish it most effectively. It's not gonna give the most natural presentation. If you watch bait fish that move in the water, a lot of times they're just moving really slowly and they're kind of going up and down. That eighth ounce weedless hook kind of mimics that just very silent and slow movement as you're fishing it. You can give pauses and allow that lure to drop. If you use a quarter ounce, it's gonna pretty much keep it completely on the bottom. And if you use something too light, it'll ride too high. So in that three foot range, I find that the eighth ounce hook is best to catch redfish in the summertime just because it puts it right in front of their face, right at eye level in the strike zone. And it is just the best way to give a really silent, subtle presentation. So I'd say an eighth ounce owner twist lock, hoss hook, or if you want to use a jig head, you can use the trout eye jig heads. Those are my preferences. Uh, those would be my recommendations for rigging these paddle tails. But again, one of my top choices to use in the summertime for redfish. Now I've got one more ace up my sleeve for if fish aren't touching the paddle tails and the top water bite has died down. Maybe it's a little windy and it's hard to fish the paddle tails or the water's dirty. I need some extra flash. I'm gonna throw one of these John spoons or one of the aqua dream spoons these are phenomenal for catching redfish in the summertime because again they mimic that small really shiny shad bait or the small pinfish and you can fish them around structure again you need to make sure you get a weedless spoon not one that has the trebles hanging off the back of it I do like the Johnson silver minnows or the aqua dream spoons these are fantastic for catching redfish in the summer because they very closely mimic that bait uh, that they are after so I will fish these on windy days because they're 
probably one of the best lures to throw into wind. You're gonna be able to cast exactly where you want to. It cuts through the wind really easily because there's not a lot of surface area. Uh, with paddle tails, a lot of times they can catch the wind if you're not casting with it, uh, and it'll kind of shoot that lure right back at you. But you don't have that problem with the spoons, and especially if there's dirty water, you do get some rains in the summertime, the afternoon showers that can make that water kind of tannic, and that's great time to fish a spoon uh, because that tannic water does a great job of letting the light bounce off of these spoons. And in fact, I've got some drone footage I'm gonna show you guys here of me fishing some of these gold spoons in some really dirty tannic water. It was literally the only lure I could get these red fish to hit, but it's super effective when fish are dialed in on small, shiny bait, and you just need something that, that is gonna get their attention, especially if you're fishing around big mullet schools and they just don't seem to be paying attention to your paddle tails. Try and get this spoon and throw it straight into the school of bait that you're seeing these red fish kind of pouncing on and just roll it slowly right under the school. It's gonna get the attention of those red fish that are usually packed right up under them uh, and you'll see the mullet kind of freak out and then suddenly you've got a red fish on your hook. That's kind of how it works with spoons. It's just a slow roll, very, very easy to fish this lure. Every once in a while, I'll give it a pop to make sure that there's not any grass or anything on these spoons uh, and you will catch some very serious fish doing this. Now I'm sure I'm gonna get the question, why am I holding up a silver spoon while I'm talking about gold spoons? But both will work when you fish them in different situations. Honestly, I will say I prefer the silver spoon in some cleaner water. If I find that redfish in that 10% of the time that they won't touch a paddle tail, uh, they will hit this silver spoon. It gives off a really nice clean flash in that really nice clean water. I don't like to fish the gold spoons in cleaner water. Uh, they will work, just I find that the silver is a little bit more natural. But in dirtier water, I do hold a very heavy preference on gold just because it sends off a little bit more light than I see the silver spoon do in the tannic dirty water. That's just my personal preference and opinion. If you guys feel differently, feel free to comment below uh, and we can start a discussion there. But there's really just a personal preference on that. But you can fish either color and they absolutely will catch fish in both water clarity situations. But if I had to give some guidance as to which one to choose when, I would say silver spoons in cleaner water and gold spoons in dirtier water. But again, make sure you have one of these in your tackle box when you leave the boat ramp or you go out to wade because they're a great ace up your sleeve when fish won't touch anything else or you just need something that's a little bit easier to fish in really windy conditions or has a little bit more visibility in some of those dirtier water situations. So again, this is my third lure that you're definitely gonna wanna make sure you have when you're going after redfish. Now one caveat to all of this, be it the top water or the paddle tail or the weedless spoon, these are my personal preferences for the top three lures for catching redfish in the summer. I go out pretty much almost every other day and I use at least one or more of these and over the past two months, I've caught a lot of fish every single time I go out with them, a lot of redfish and other species, but these are my personal preferences. There might be some other lures out there that you guys feel are better and belong in the top three, and I'd love to hear what those are below in the comments. If you don't mind leaving one, we can start a discussion there, and who knows, maybe I can make some videos on how to fish them, uh, my personal kind of thoughts on them. I'd love to hear from you guys on what your favorite redfish lures are for summer, but if you wanna pick any of the three that I've mentioned up, we do have them in the Salt Strong shop at 20% off for Salt Strong insiders plus a ton of other awesome tackle that you get at a discount for being an insider so definitely pick some of these up if you don't have them I can almost guarantee they're gonna help you catch more redfish if you're throwing them in the right spots I would really recommend that you guys join the insider club if you don't know about how to pick the right spots for redfish where we show you guys every single week where we go how to pick the right spots for redfish the current trends and so much more there is a lot of really great stuff in there so please join us in the insider club thank you guys again so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video and if you're new to Salt Strong, just know we're the number one online fishing club out there because we actually guarantee we're gonna help you catch more fish, save time and money on tackle, and make friends fast, or it's free. So please join us in the Salt Strong Insider Club soon, and thank you again so much for watching.